What is the biggest global challenge you care about and why? Okay, so one global challenge that I care about is the inconsistencies between how we in the Western world view like Western centric media and the East, because I think there's lots of mis um, misunderstandings between, um, I guess, this divide between the East and the West and how we view um, in the West view like Eastern history, which is um, part of my internship right now, which is how um, like World War II like took place in Europe, but also took place in Asia. And the Asian history of World War II in the Pacific Asia theater is like never talked about. And why do global issues affect you? Um, so I've always loved to travel. And um, one thing that comes along with traveling is to um, cultivate an appreciation of cultural diversity. And um, I think that the world is a really beautiful place, but a lot of the diversity is being threatened. And as, you know, a person who can't even vote yet living in, you know, the United States, like thousands of miles away from um, a lot of people, I guess, in Asia, which is where um, the region that I um, have researched most about, um, it's hard to sort of grasp what my role is. So I've really um, sort of been interested in really studying these issues that take place in Burma or take place in China, because um, in the end, I really care about um, making a sustainable world where all people have opportunity. And how did you get involved with advocacy and what have you learned through advocating? Um, okay, so one way I got um, involved with advocacy was through um, STAND, which is an organization I actually um, got introduced to through Global Scholar 2019. And it's um, an organization that's dedicated to ending mass atrocities. So I joined um, this committee focusing on um, mass atrocities and ethnic, ethnic violence in Burma. And so I've sort of used uh, my work with STAND to connect through um, with AMP Global Youth even today. So I actually arranged um, an interview with a youth Rohingya um, advocate that was brought to AMP's platforms. And I've learned a lot that, um, you know, what's really important is that you just, you know, lend an ear to the issues that are going on all around us that we may not be um, aware of. And a lot of times it's not really, it doesn't have to be like donating or, you know, holding up a sign. A lot of times it can just be, you know, taking, set, setting apart time to listen and to learn. And how has Global Scholar helped you? What did you enjoy about the program? Yeah, so as already mentioned, um, Global Scholar was just a really eye-opening opportunity because it really, you know, well, the year I did it, we were able to go around DC and to visit different organizations. And it really gave me um, insight into um, what it looks like for me, myself, um, individually, to um, have a meaningful life and to be a good global citizen. So um, we were able to meet with people from different NGOs and um, government organizations and to hear about their stories and how the different, their different experiences getting involved in what they're passionate about. And I really enjoyed that hands-on um, experience and all the workshops as well and the community. And the final question is, how are youth voices powerful? Youth voices are so powerful because although we um, may not be able to vote, we can still, um, you know, rally with our senators and with our local policymakers. And a lot of adults, like if they know that you're a youth, they'll actually want to listen to you, um, to you more. 
So, yeah, the youth voice is very powerful in building, um, I guess, cross-generational bridges and to really providing a new, unique perspective on how we can conduct advocacy and how to reach different populations of people who may not be aware of global issues.